Well, hello, everyone. I am here with Stefania Leone, and she is an old friend from, we go way back in the old astrology days. And she is an amazing Vedic astrologer. And she's in Mexico. She's in Playa del Carmen. And she hosts all sorts of wonderful talks, really uh, informing people about Vedic astrology and how it's different from Western astrology. So with no further ado, I would really love, I'm, I'm so happy you're here, Stefania, and to welcome you. Actually, I know her from so long ago. We studied together in Sedona and all over the U.S., but you're actually from Canada. Let me, let me open up this view so everyone can see you. So you're actually from Canada. Uh, so please tell everyone, and I know you as Patty, but Patty, uh, tell everyone what you've been up to because you've been doing a lot of mystical, spiritual, and healing work throughout your entire career and love of the metaphysical and spirituality. And you've helped so many people. So let me just open the floor for you and tell everyone about what you've been up to and what you have going there in Mexico, because it's fascinating. Great. Thanks, Joni. You're it's welcome. such a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me on your talk show. Yes, we go way back and uh, have a great respect for you and Thank admiration. You. Thank you. And that is uh, mainly because you're walking your talk. And <laughs> when it comes to Vedic astrology, I consider it um, the most um, poignant important tool for self-knowledge mm -hmm. planet yeah and, i agree yeah and um when people are taking the journey inwards and start to ask questions well who am i what's my purpose um the number one and best place to go is to your vedic birth chart right hands down and I like to say that um, it's a manual, you know, in because in India, before India was called India, it was called Bharat. Hmm. And that's where we get the Mahabharata. Okay. And the Bhagavad Gita is inside the Mahabharata. And uh, this is coming from a people that lived up in, in the very north of India. And I actually made that trek there in 2006. Wow. I went to all four sacred sites of the Hindu religion up in the Himalayas. That is, there. it's the source of rivers. I was at the source of the Ganges actually and met a spiritual being there, one of my highlights of my life. Um, but um, going to this little place called Man, M-A-N-N, -N, Man, and it is right on, actually now right inside the border of China, but you look down into this valley and that valley is twice the size of the Nile and it's an underground river now, but this was where the Hindu people came from and they're the ones that left the Vedas. Mm -hmm. And actually in this little village, I didn't even know, I was just guided to go there. It wasn't, it's not even like I planned for years to go there. I was just guided like I am in so many uh, voyages in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, oh, by the way, this is where Ganesha lived. This is Ganesha's cave. Can you imagine? I can't. I got inside just a little cave. I got inside and I lodged myself in there. <laughs> I just said, download, please. And uh, they had petrified leaves of the Mahabharata also where there was a priest in there. It was really divine. But wow. this was the origins of the Vedas, you know, and, and the Hindu people left the Vedas. Veda is means knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, it, and that's where we get Sanskrit. And that morphed into the Hindu religion. So the Hindu religion is never meant to be a religion. It was it's just what happened to the, the Vedic information. And um, I really like to point that out. And then the most important thing about when you start to study the Vedas, whether that's yoga, because that's a source of yoga, Ayurveda, and um, 
uh, I like to point out that what they tell us is that the rishis or the sages said that they downloaded this information from source and it's called shruti, mm -hmm. shruti that which is heard. Yeah. So it's a very pure transmission and that everything after that is shramitri, that which is remembered. And I think that's really important to keep in mind when we look at any kind of spiritual information. Mm -hmm. And um, so as we know that that um, it was called Jyotisha, the science of light, and it was one of the original first Vedangas or limbs of the Vedas, one of the first six. And I wish that um, yoga teachers would learn this because yoga is exploding and the, the sister science, yoga is actually even part of Ayurveda. It is. I know. Yoga is just the word you, which means to yoke, which is basically right. the, the alchemy that exists. Either it's a, either it's an alchemy in the chart or it's alchemy in your body when you have poses or it's alchemy in herbs and food. It's just an alchemical combination that produces uh, a, a different effect. So, mm -hmm. well, you know, they say that uh, Vedic astrology, which is just simply from the Vedas, they say that in the hymns from from the Rig Veda that astrology is the eyes of the Vedas or the eyes of man. And I thought that was just so profound because, as you know, this gives us vision. This is what gives us the light into the world to understand our Vedic chart. Exactly. So like you, this is my favorite subject to talk about. <laughs> Get me started yes. on, on Vedic astrology. I will talk. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I can tend to be quiet. Mm. But um, so, yeah, I have a deep, deep passion for astrology. And um, and it did take me to India and it took me on journeys. And I had also developed um, the the Ayurveda because uh, I became, I went to the first school in Canada of massage and hydrotherapy. Mm -hmm. So I really had studied a lot about healing over the years and have applied it on many different levels and actually incorporate that into my readings, of course, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and then I'm a yogini, I practice yeah. yoga, and I've had a lot of masters come to me. So journeying to India to see, to go to these places where it originated was very special. But yeah. the key point is that is that this information was an oral tradition, and it came out of northern India, and it went to many cultures, and landed in Greece, Mm -hmm. three years ago and um they just created a calendar that they forgot to put in the procession of the equinoxes or they never knew about it so yeah. they're you know the western is now as you know almost 24 so, <clears throat> well back then they aligned anyway you know the, exactly. the western signs aligned and because of procession that's where it started to change and diff and become different so now we're almost a full sign uh, different from where the stars are. So uh, explain a little bit about your knowledge with all of that so that uh, everyone can better understand the difference between the Western and the Vedic astrology. Well, um, like you, I know there's a handful of us that were, were brave enough once we were already deeply entrenched in Western astrology, that we were brave enough once we realized that we were doing it wrong to go back to school, make the investment in money and time and the, the brain shift, that the, the consciousness shift that was needed to go to the Vedic astrology. So I honor you for that because that was not easy. You know, right. I, um, I, when I first started studying, well, I started studying as a child because honestly, the truth is, is that I was born in Northern Canada, mm -hmm. outside Alaska in the Yukon, mm -hmm. very remote. And um, my mom was really into Edgar Casey and Jean Dixon and all these. And I was reading all her books by the time I was six, seven, eight years old. You know, the same thing with me. My mother had all those same books around the house and I read them all when I was a teenager. That's so funny. Yeah. And then I remember walking home when I was seven, and I distinctly remember this. I heard a voice, and it said, you are an astrologer. Wow. Yeah. Love and so that. I've known my whole life that that's what I'm supposed to do, and I had a natural passion for it. So I've never been in a hurry. There's no hurry because I knew, you know, I think the world is so much in a hurry these days, you know, hurry, hurry for what? 
Yeah. Yeah. But um, like you, I started getting serious about uh, studying astrology when I, I had finished my massage therapy degree and I was living in Ottawa in the capital city of Canada. And there was a big organization, big group going on there. And I started to study Western astrology and mm -hmm. I started with, uh, you know, the first person that really got me going was Jeff Green. <laughs> Those were the good old days. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he told me that I was going to be in the top, you know, 10% of the astrologers in the world. And I was just 25. I just had a baby. Mm -hmm. I liked it, but I didn't. Oh, sorry. But I didn't, um, you know, I wasn't, I was a little overwhelmed, to be honest, you know, because yeah. when I had gotten into the Western, the first books that were that I'd found were Rosicrucian books. Yeah. <laughs> very, very intense. Very. So I, I, you know, and I had a typewriter and I used to mm -hmm. type it out probably like you yes. and I became overwhelmed. And so I'm like, you know, I, but I should come back to this when I'm a little older and I can handle this. And but, there were no computers. Remember, we had to calculate our charts by hand back then. The cameras, that's right. <laughs> exactly. And in 1987 in Ottawa, well, I was lucky enough to run into a teacher that was from England that was teaching the course from England, from the Faculty of England. Mm -hmm. So I did that course. And in, in 87, I wrote my exams for the Faculty of England. Mm -hmm. And that's a free computer. Yeah. So, you know, it was like five pages of calculations before we could even, you know, look at the chart. Exactly. So the, needless the to say. The ephemeris, the logarithms, the uh, change of time, time zones, longitude, latitude. We had to know all of that. Yeah. Yeah. That was very difficult for me. Yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Interpretation is my forte, not numbers, but we had to do it. We Thank had to you. do it, right? Yeah, we had to do it. That's right. Had to do it. So I did. I be, and I, um, for whatever reason, you know, being Canadian, I thought, no, you know, I want to get a diploma in this. And in Canada, I went to Canada. Oh no, astrology is uh, is under witchcraft, and there's nobody in Canada teaching astrology. Really? So I went to the Faculty of England and had this great teacher. She actually ended up leaving Ottawa and going to Washington D.C. to work with the Reagans. Oh, really? They were really like, they're really into astrology. I'm going to work with them. But, um, you know, but I studied with probably Rob Hand and Jeff Green. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't even remember now, but all the great Alan ones. Alan Oaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those were the old astrology days. Yes. Um, I, I was there too, studied with... Rob Han was like the guru back then. He was. He had amazing books. He was brilliant. He was. And it's too bad that they had the calculations wrong, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> right? <laughs> really, really too bad. I and, uh, but I did become certified, or I wrote my exams in 87, mm -hmm. in 1987. And then, you know, I had, uh, I also had a child in 87, and my second child. Yeah. So, an RMT and just very deep into everything metaphysical and esoteric Me too. Oh, like you just very yeah. entrenched in it and yeah. never even was introduced to Vedic didn't really even know it existed mm -hmm. yeah right? I know so, there you know even, why? there wasn't the internet there was no way that we could find out what was going on around us I, I remember being in you know I was around 19 years old like about you but I remember finding out after reading the autobiography of a yogi that Paramahansa Yogananda's teacher was a Vedic astrologer and I thought oh, that's really cool he's an astrologer but what is a Vedic or in you know the astrology from India I think that's what it was called initially because actually Vedic astrology is kind of the the name that got coined after time, but it's, you know, it's traditionally Indian astrology and they take into account the fact that there is procession of the equinoxes. The stars are moving, the signs have shifted. And this is the true placements astronomically according to the signs which constitute the, the stars and the signs are one. So pretty much, because of this movement, we have different 
uh, different, you know, it goes backwards. So the stars are moving backwards. This is procession. And you know what? I really do find that my readings took off and had the clarity and just really, it was just so much more predictive and profound and worked. Whereas all the things that kind of didn't gel or work together when I was doing Western, all of a sudden it was like, it became clear and everything began to work and the predictive tools and techniques. I was like, why is it more people? Why aren't they studying this now? So you know what I had to, I had to just hook, line and sinker, go into the Vedic, do everything I could, just like you, we were, we were along the same path. And, you know, we decided that this was what we needed to dedicate our lives to, because this was the real deal. And mm -hmm. this is what, really helps people. I mean, really helps people because you know what I always, I always say, Patty, is that your chart is a blueprint of everything that you've been throughout all of your lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And when you take that blueprint, you can understand what you've been doing lifetime after lifetime. So you know what, you could correct it in this lifetime. So we don't have to come back in the next lifetime and repeat all the same things over and over and over again. The chart is just the information we need. To, it's a life map that gives us about everything we've been and all the possibilities of who we can be in this lifetime. What do you think about that? Well, I like to say that the, the, that this people, these Hindu people, whoever they were, for, for wherever they were from, way more intelligent than us. <laughs> I say that you know they knew they we were going to be living here, and they're like, "Here's a manual." Yeah, you might have a manual. Here's a manual, and mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like you. I, it's the it's um, I think uh, David Frawley coined the karmic code. Yeah. But I, I, I also see it like that is like the way that I see the chart now. And as you know, we, we're, we've been doing this for years. And the, uh, the thing that I have found is that the more that I've developed and spiritually grown, the more I can see in the chart. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? And likewise, the more I got into spirituality. Yeah. Like you say, I could read a chart more clearly. But the astrology changed me too into a new awareness a new consciousness, I feel. So it went both ways. Does that make sense to you? Sure. And that, well, I mean, in the Western, I had all, I was like loaded Vir Mars and Venus and Virgo and a Pisces moon. And in reality, I'm Mars and Venus and Leo and Aquarian moon. So that was a big shift. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think oh, yeah. this, um, well, what I wanted to say to your point was that when I was doing Western astrology, I was so gung ho, probably like you. I, you know, I used to have clients that sit there for. I would, I would hold them in the room for two hours or talking <laughs> to them. You know, they would drag themselves out of. And um, I was, I kept, I was searching, and it wasn't until that I became the Vedic astrologer that it became seamless. I didn't get tired when I gave readings, mm. and it wasn't exhausting. And it was just like satya, the truth. You know, you hit the truth, yeah. and to I found the Western astrologer I tried to be a psychoanalyst because I wasn't right. getting the real answers that I needed whereas it, when we went to the Vedic it's just like here's your information mm -hmm. exactly I I get it so it just became when it wasn't a struggle no not a struggle it, it just seamless to do two readings right yeah yeah mm -hmm. so I mean it's so interesting how the universe works because we come back full circle, you and I, and now we're here. And now look at the world. The world can see us all talking about it here on YouTube. And I am just really excited to reconnect with you because I know we have the same level of vibration, frequency with, all, with un trying to understand and make and learn more always learning, always expanding, always growing, um, because that's what we're here for. And yes. that's what the astrology teaches us. So is there anything else, um, Steph Stefania, that you want the world to know about your work and what you're here to do to help and guide people? Well, um, my number one passion is definitely Vedic astrology. 
you know, I, I'm definitely like you. This is, I will do this until the day I drop. And the older I get, the more I enjoy doing it. Me too. So much enjoyment and satisfaction mm -hmm. out, of, out of this work. And I'm not so much into prediction. I'm really interested in helping people understand themselves. Okay. That's sort of my focus is like, let me help you really understand yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is an, a real art to be able to take this complex set of numbers and then explain to somebody who they are in one hour yeah. and, um, um, and leave them feeling good. That's the key point, because I find that the reason that uh, uh, astrology is still not really highly respected yet is because it's not regulated enough and people read a book and then they go and tell somebody you know about themselves and when somebody hears something bad about themselves they never forget that's true then so you'll get them 20 30 years later and they'll look okay i'll have a reading i had one once and uh, they were told i was told this so the one thing that i do in my readings i'm extremely careful in how i deliver information i agree even if it's difficult information, I want to leave the person empowered and positive. Me too. That's the, the I really, really believe in that because astrology is to point out to people what their gifts, what their goals are, who they really are, and what they should be aspiring to. So I always tell all my students, astrology is to empower people to be the best they can be, to be who they've come here to be, that's really the tool of astrology, not just saying, you know, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And, you know, but I truly believe, and I know you're along the same line of thinking, that we have free will too. So yeah. there's certain, you know, events that if you know where the patterns are going or the cycles are going, that you have the free will to express. And of course, the free will to be who you've come here to be, most importantly, in the line of work like you're doing to empower people. So that's so important. And that's really the tool of astrology, what it should be used for, for self-betterment, to, to improve, to heal because really what we're doing is we're healing our lives the whole time we're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I wrote a book a few years ago and um, I haven't promoted it at all because <laughs> I'm just not so good at promotion. Well, and promote it right here and now. What is it? <laughs> Tell us about it. Um, it's still not in paper form. It's on Amazon uh, and for Kindles, and it's called Unveiling Vedic Astrology, the Science of Cosmic Consciousness. And it's just uh, 108 pages. Ah. And it's the explanation of what is Vedic Astrology? Where did it come from? How is it tune in with frequency and numbers? And I, I love it. I think it's a, a beautiful little book. Mm -hmm. and, um, I didn't want to write a book until I could just sit down and write the book. Mm -hmm. And so that's that book. And I, I think it's a, a nice place for people that are wondering what is Vedic astrology. And it's, it's a nice book. I like it. So I, I wrote that book. And then um, I've had a blog since 2011 vedicastrologyblog.com and I was here in Mexico my kids were grown and I opened a little meditation center here in Playa del Carmen in 2010 and um, ran meditations and I should say that's also the year that um, the flip happened for me you know like when you meditate enough there's a, a flip that happens where your brain goes quiet Mm -hmm. And then you start to control the brain as opposed to the brain controlling you. So that happened to me during that time. So I'm also um, witness to that that happens, you know, because so many people's minds are rushing. But mm -hmm. you meditate enough and then there's this flip that happens and your brain goes quiet and you just use it as a tool. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, during that time, I had somebody come to me and they were trying to push me into this, into the blogging and 
And so, yeah, somebody came out of nowhere, this beautiful man that was a Vedic master, uh, the, a, a retired classical guitarist living in Germany of all places that was a friend of a friend. And he made my blog for me. I just got pushed right into it. You were and supposed to do it. Yeah. So it's been 10 years now, over 10 years, and I've remained consistent. I keep it to 500 words. Um, because I know people don't have a, a, a long attention span. I use art because I, I use it to trigger people's minds. Mm -hmm. And um, I try my what I'm trying to do with uh, Vedic astrology is raise the bar. Good. You know, it's a highly um, sophisticated language. It appeals to intelligent people. And um, so my what I my goal or what I've been working on is, okay, do a reading, get somebody familiar with the chart so that when I'm posting stuff, they're able to reference their chart and use it as a tool. I love that. So this is all in your blog. Uh, my blog is just Vedic astrology blog. That That's just my full moon and new moon posts. I don't have anything else there really. Um, well, um, and then I have a new site called Stefania Leone Jotishi.com. And that's where I offer my services, which I'm a little, um, I'm not shy. I won't say I'm shy because I'm not shy. I think, you know, I, ha I'm, I identify with Vishaka. Mm -hmm. Vishaka is where you mature later in life. You kind of come out later in life. And so I've never really been in a hurry because yeah. I know that I'm going to be doing this work for a long time. Yeah. And um, um, but I did create a course a number of years ago called the self-study course. And it's just one on one. And it's just when people want to really get to know themselves. And I usually choose my clients that, you know, the ones that are going through uh an eclipse transit on their sun and the moon. And they've also got Saturn somewhere else <laughs> really intense. So I'm like, this is a good time to study yourself and focus in on yourself. Yeah. It's just one call a month with me where we, we go through one, their house, explain it and um, give them a little bit of homework. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's uh, really nice. I mean, everybody goes through a big transformation. I get some familiar with astrology if they know if they want to learn more. Mm -hmm. and, but they become really familiar with their chart wonderful and that's all i've got so far i haven't gone to the big groups okay well we're gonna we're, we're gonna change that i think you <laughs> but that's okay so people can uh i think will really enjoy your blog and we'll put the links down below where they can find your blog as well as your books and your writing and contact info info so we were talking before we started. Tell everyone about your dream about what you want to do with your house there in Mexico with healing. And yeah, that that sounded real interesting. I think people would love to know. Okay. So I grew up with a sick mother. And so I was trying to help my mom and I had a lot of responsibility early on. And it, it took me into studying alternative healing modalities. Mm -hmm. So I actually went to the first school in Canada of massage and hydrotherapy. Mm -hmm. And then I've just gone on for years and studied, you know, so much mm -hmm. to do with alternative healing and diets and homeopathy. And now I'm quite into um, uh, biohacking technology which are the latest technologies, which use frequency medicine. And yeah, that is so, so cool. Many, I really think it's really cool. So, uh, and then I have another side um, as us astrologers tend to be multifaceted, you know, into ecology and um, this jungle that's here outside of Playa del Carmen is the second largest jungle in the world. And we need to preserve the jungles because they produce oxygen and uh, I have had some land that's been very remote for a very long time, but now it's it, we're getting ready to move and, and act on it. And so uh, it's antique jungle, ancient trees that are hundreds of years old that the Mayans planted. And, they're, and it's just stunning, uh, stunning in there and very quiet and calm. And I'm part of a... a uh, a network of old ranches that have never been developed and we're not going to bring in services. We're just going to be solar and 
wind and we're really going to do our best to preserve. But I'm going to build a little, uh, my youngest daughter married a Moroccan, so I love the Moroccan style. So I'm going to do a little Moroccan, a white Moroccan, very, very safe, contained 12 room hotel. I like to do it because I'm going to have one room after all the signs where people can come and truly mm -hmm. rest and rejuvenate and and um, have biohacking techniques and, you know. Wow. Well, I'm astrology, uh, astrology. When that opens, I'm coming. So <laughs> I hope you reserve a room for me whenever that's ready. Let me know. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, Stefania, it has been such a pleasure to bring you on and let the world know all about what you've been up to and what you're doing, because you're an amazing, beautiful soul that is full of light and consciousness, and you're doing your work. You are so empowered. You're doing the work that you've come here to do to help people heal and change their lives and most of all realize who they really are so with that i think we'll close you want to say anything to anybody but as we close here no i just want to say thank you so much you know we're speaking on a new moon in in pisces we and sure i've got my k2 in pisces so i was thinking who's going to come out of my past always do there don't they are. There you are. So it's a delight. I follow your work and I really respect your work and you and honor you. And I'm delighted to reconnect. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you so much.